Hello, I'm Lisa Myers. I'm the CEO of RevSearch and also a, a very big SEO geek. Uh, I would like to talk to you today about uh, collaborative campaigns. Collaborative campaigns is not anything new in the creative uh, agency space, uh, but I would think that in the SEO industry is still something that is uh, coming to the surface. Um, it's a creative uh, thought process uh, and something we've been doing a couple of years now at RevSearch. So um, I would like to talk about a very specific market and how this opened our eyes to collaborative uh, markets. In fact, I think this specific country uh, taught us uh, more about collaborative uh, marketing and campaigns uh, than anything else. So I'm originally from Norway, uh, so I'm quite biased in saying that it is a very beautiful country. Uh, Norway has uh, some of uh, the most beautiful uh, countryside, including the fjords and the mountains, etc., I think, in the world. Uh, but we also have um, uh, a very uh, particular and uh, maybe, maybe even suspicious um, uh, kind of culture in terms of how people are. And I can say that as being Norwegian myself. Um, in fact, I would uh, I would dare to say that uh, Norwegians are quite uh, immediately suspicious, uh, especially when it comes to uh, sales and marketing techniques. So uh, most people would probably quite feel familiar if they worked in the Norwegian market to this kind of uh, mentality. Now, that doesn't mean that Norwegians aren't friendly and positive. It's just that they might be a little bit more reserved uh, than other uh, cultures. I would also say that Norwegians are very honest, um, straight talking, um, and also very collaborative. So you really have to understand how the Norwegian cultures uh, and how people think and how people are in Norway in order to work in a market such as Norway. So we started working uh, in the Norwegian market um, about three years ago. Um, and we realized quite quickly that the strategies we were using in other countries when it came to SEO and particularly link development weren't working in Norway. This is because Norwegians have um, a very suspicious mindset of what you want um, when you start talking to them. So uh, email and, uh, and different strategies that were commonly used uh, in other countries uh, didn't really adapt well in Norway. We also realized very uh, quickly that there are a very limited amount of websites uh, in Norway. Um, so there were very little point in targeting the smaller websites and try to convince people that had small blogs, etc., um, to, to link or to mention and, and so on. So um, this actually taught us something very valuable. Uh, it taught us um, uh, what actually became then the strategy for a lot of campaigns at Verve Search. Uh, because we realized that the question we had to ask uh, weren't related to our clients, it were related to the sites we were targeting. So instead of asking, what does Expedia or uh, Hotel Club or another client need, uh, it's about what does the site we are targeting need. What we realized is that we needed to ask the right questions. We needed to ask the right questions of what uh, the site owners uh, needed. So what do they need? What are they looking for? What don't they have? And what do they have on their site? Uh, we needed to, to ask ourselves, how can we add value? And these questions, again, they were to the actual sites that we're targeting, not necessarily to our clients. Uh, those were the questions we had to start asking in order to come up with the right kind of strategy. And then most of all, we needed to think, how could we collaborate with them? Because of how the cultural um, fit with the Norwegians and how they think, we needed to think, how can we add value, but how can we make them part of that process of creating these kind of campaigns or ideas that we wanted to pitch to them? So we needed to create campaigns that deserved links. And you would... I would quite like to think that we've always done that. We always created campaigns that were, were worthy of links. Uh, but more so than, uh, than ever, this was needed in the Norwegian uh, market because uh, it was about 
collaborating as well. So um, back in 2013, the back end of 2013, we started working with the tourist boards in terms of start talking to them about what they had, what they didn't have on their sites, um, and also making suggestions. So the very first campaign we did um, in terms of a collaborative campaign was a campaign about the Northern Lights for Visit Norway um, for our client Expedia. Now this campaign was basically a campaign um, about the Northern Lights and you know what, there's nothing, there's no pictures you can take or no video that you can make that will be better than what is already on Visit Norway. So obviously we weren't going to pitch to them a, a video or an image of the Northern Lights or even an article because they have better content than any other site. But what they were lacking is that they were lacking a way of, um, um, of explaining how this very complicated uh, concept of Northern Lights works. What is the actual science behind it? And explaining it in a really easy way. So we kind of back then called it infographic. It's not really an infographic because it doesn't have loads of numbers. It's basically a, a visual representation, a visual story of how the Northern Lights work. When we created that, we then um, uh, talked to them again about whether this was something that they'd be interested in. We obviously had to create it and design it in a way that it would fit with the look and feel of their site. This is kind of uh, a, a very... Uh, obvious thing for a creative but might not be so obvious for a SEO thinker. So um, we then came to them with this a visual uh, piece about the Northern Lights, and they were more than happy to, to include that on their site. In fact, uh, they wanted several versions, and we ended up creating uh, one Norwegian, one English, and one German version for them. And this, uh, this uh, visual representation did really well in terms of uh, generating uh, social and also additional links. But most of all, uh, we managed to forge a relationship with a very valuable uh, uh, website for our clients, Expedia. And then uh, from that, and this is where I think collaborative campaigns and thinking is really useful, is uh, when you start one relationship and you do well by them, they will lead to other uh, opportunities. And so shortly after we worked with Visit Norway, we started working with uh, Visit Northern Norway, who really liked the, uh, the campaign we'd done for Visit Norway. And they were like, well, we, we would like this. But instead of just saying, yes, you can have this on your site as well, we wanted to, to work with them on something that was very specific and special for the Northern uh, Norwegian website. Um, and again, this website has some of the most beautiful imagery and videos that you can, you can imagine. Um, but uh, being Norwegian myself, I realized that there was one thing that, uh, uh, that is very typical of the nor northern Norwegian culture uh, and tourism. And that's all the fairy tales uh, that comes from uh, the northern Norwegian uh, region. Uh, and I was told one of these fairy tales myself as a little girl. And this is bringing, again, trying to bring in some personality uh, and something that, that you can add to the table. Um, so we ended up doing a, a visual, um, again, a visual story. So basically storytelling through a visual um, about a, a specific fairy tale uh, in, in the northern Norwegian region about um, uh, uh, trolls that turn into mountains. Um, and this uh, uh, visual uh, generated um, some great press for visit uh, northern Norway, uh, including loads of regional and local press in the northern Norwegian community. Um, and obviously Expedia also shared this. So this was a real collaborative effort between our client Expedia, who we work for, uh, as well as the northern Norwegian uh, tourist board. So this isn't dirty link development, it is uh, collaborative campaigns to, to work on something that both of you want to talk about uh, and, and create assets to help tell those stories. So these were some of the first campaigns we did and obviously this has gotten, gotten more and more sophisticated and we obviously wanted to improve and uh, improve our strategies. So uh, this year, um, just a couple of months ago in, in May in 2015, um, we uh, started uh, talking to uh, Narvik Tourist Board. This is even more local in terms of the tourist boards uh, in Norway. So Narvik is a, a, a small town uh, up in northern Norway. 
Uh, it also happened to be the, the, the first place that uh, the uh, Germans invaded uh, during World War II. So uh, Narvik uh, was basically where uh, most of the naval battles happened uh, in Norway during the war. Uh, and uh, in April uh, 2015, it was 75 years since that happened. So this coincided with a, a very big uh, anniversary for the World War II and the Norwegian history. So we had this idea talking to Narvik, um, tourist board, about creating an interactive asset telling the story that very few, actually even Norwegians, know about um, from the World War II, where the battle that happened uh, with uh, Allied forces from the UK and from uh, Norway tried to defend that town and that uh, naval pos position uh, for Norway, and how this actually happened uh, over several uh, weeks. In fact, uh, Norway managed to, uh, to keep them off the first round. Um, and the interesting thing with this is that a lot of the ships that, that sank that, uh, those, uh, over those days and those weeks, they are still actually in the fjord uh, in Narvik. Um, and it's a very historical um, kind of uh, history and interest to this. In fact, it attracts hundreds and hundreds of divers each year um, to uh, explore these wreckage uh, in the sea. So this idea started as something wanting to tell the interactive stories about those ships that had sunk. But when we started working with Visit Narvik and then got involved with the museum uh, of Narvik, so the, the world... Uh, world sorry, the, uh, the war museum, we realized that there were so many other stories that hadn't been told yet that people didn't know about. So this quickly escalated to becoming not just a uh, visit Narvik and Expedia effort, but also the war museum. And, uh, and people were very willing to contribute because Norwegians are very collaborative and very easy to work with because they really want to do good work. So we... Um, we started putting this together and it grew from becoming just a, a interactive map of these ships to becoming a, a lot bigger. So uh, in addition to, to being on Visit Narvik, we got a lot of, uh, of coverage for this, but I would like to just show you a little bit of the campaign first. So uh, the Battles of Narvik was uh, translated in, in both Norwegian and English uh, on the Expedia site. Um, and then we, we worked with uh, Visit Narvik and they included on their site, etc. So this started off with being a, 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 a just being a map, but now it became an actual story, interactive story site where we included interviews of actual veterans that were there, that were telling their story, um, which is... Uh, is, is, is hugely valuable um, and, and not actually uh, done before. So uh, we had interviews of uh, war veterans. This is uh, Ivan Vanya. Um, we have the actual map of the, uh, the, the wreckage and the, the, the pictures and the, the data with all those ships that you can, you can explore. And this basically had uh, pages and pages of content that was collaborative between the War Museum, Visit um, Narvik, uh, and uh, us as Expedia and Verve. So this uh, was obviously a very uh, high quality historic campaign. And because it was so good in terms of quality and intent of what we wanted to achieve, the results was really amazing. So from an SEO point of view, and this is obviously how we measure things from SEO, um, the actual uh, links we got was um, uh, 42 linking root domains, which in the Norwegian market is, is absolutely huge. Um, and the kind of level of coverage we got because of the quality of the campaign um, is, is, I'm going to let uh, talk for itself. So including some, uh, some very good uh, northern Norwegian newspapers like Norlis, uh, which has a, a very high um, readership, but also things like uh, Narvik Kommune, which is the council. This is like, we, we're talking real high quality um, uh, domains and high quality in terms of trust. Um, we also got coverage in the, um, the German embassy in Oslo. So it, obviously this was, uh, this was historically researched very well as well. But this is when it starts getting really interesting because we have tried for years to try to get the kind of coverage that 
uh, uh, of the top, top tier media uh, and, and not succeeded. But from doing this kind of campaign, we got coverage in NRK, which is kind of the Norway's equivalent to BBC. In fact, they, they covered it on several, um, uh, on, on several occasions. So we are now having, we were now getting the, the highest level of uh, press coverage. But that didn't stop there. In fact, uh, in, in addition to that, we also got the, the royal uh, family in Norway um, to, to include this in, in part of their coverage of the World War II um, kind of anniversary. And um, for, for me personally, I think this was is quite, is, is the biggest one, um, the, uh, the Norwegian army. So this is the actual army covering on their website. Uh, if it's good enough for the Norwegian army, it should be good enough for anyone. And in addition to those links that we generated, we generated some considerable social shares, including uh, the Imperial War Museum. And this is the interesting thing about social, is when one starts covering it, you get uh, more and more, and this is how it, 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 it kind of gets snowballs. So after Imperial War Museum uh, covered it, Aftenposten, uh, which is a, 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 the big, one of the biggest newspapers in Norway, also covered it. So this is basically to show you that collaborative campaigns can give you better results than any other kind of campaigns because everyone has a stakeholder in it. Everyone wants it to succeed. And when, when everyone is um, mentally uh, involved and uh, committed, uh, you will generate better results. Um, from SEO, but also from uh, a PR and brand point of view, which for us is, is great. Um, and, um, and I would just like to say that it, it, is, it is something that everyone should be thinking uh, in doing successful campaigns. Basically, collaboration and the high quality of design and development, etc., is what will give us success in SEO and uh, link development campaigns uh, in the future. So obviously we're an SEO agency, but we would like to create campaigns uh, that are the same level as high creative agency and an internal uh, uh, PR uh, campaigns. Um, this has to be the future for SEO. And I would like to challenge you to think of your own collaborative campaigns. Thank you.